All right, so this video is to show you how to change the brake pads in uh, CRV. This is a 2007. The uh, very first thing I did was make sure to put the uh, parking brake on. Now what I'm doing is loosening the lug nuts before I jack up the vehicle. I'm using <coughs> that area right there to, to use uh, to be with the jack and then this other area right here is what I'm going to be using for the jack stand. So like I said, first you want to uh, loosen the lug nuts. Um, the reason for that is because if you try to do it once the jack stand is supporting the vehicle, that motion um, could be a little dangerous rocking the car, but honestly it should, should be okay, but uh, it's always recommended to, to loosen them first. So that's what I'm doing uh, first thing. Alright, so I got the vehicle jacked up, it's on the jack stands now. Now all I'm going to do is uh, remove the lug nuts, so that way I can get the wheel off and have access to the brakes. Alright, so I got the wheel off, now what you're going to do is take the caliper off. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to remove this right here, there's also one uh, down at the bottom. I want to say these are 19 millimeter, uh, 19 or 20. I actually have have a wrench uh, of that specific size, but for some reason I can't find it. So I am going to try with this. And it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult because um, these are pretty tight, but I uh, should be able to get it done. All right. So like I said, I couldn't find my. Uh, wrench that was specific for this size um tried with the adjustable wrench but that was just too much work or too too tough because this was one real tight so what i ended up doing just using my tire iron um and that actually worked really well um they're definitely on tight but uh you can see that one's coming off i already took off the bottom one so once i take these off i can pull uh the caliper off so this is the caliper off, and then obviously what we're going to do, be doing is replacing these pads. Now there is a piston um, in here that I might have to uh, push down, um, compress it, so that way I can actually fit the new pads on. Um, that way that they'll actually fit over the rotor, because what happens is right now the piston is pushed out because the pads are low but then when I put the new pads in it'll still be at the same spot and the new pads will be out a little bit further right because they're they've got more uh, life on them uh, more meat on them so what I need to do is push that so that this the new pad goes from out here somewhere to where this one is and that way it'll fit otherwise I'll put the new pads on and they'll be like this you know so they won't fit over so we'll see how how much of that um, I have done it in the past where I just put a, a hammer um, the butt of a hammer through here and then just um, you know it'll go through with these off obviously and, uh, and then just pushed it until the piston um, compresses so we'll see how it goes with this one now to actually take the pads off, all I literally did was put my thumb in here and just pushed it forward. That's the old pad. You can see it's quite worn out. And this is the one that will be replacing it. Again, you can see it's much uh, thicker here, so that, that, that just kind of tells you that I will be needing to probably push that put piston in because I mean look at the difference there it's crazy so I will definitely be needing to put that uh push that piston in to have enough space to actually get these things back on the wheel so knock this other one out just literally pushing it doable 
And then another thing, obviously you want to make sure you're replacing the, the right one. So uh, this, this back one is the one that has this clip on it, um, whereas the one that was on this side does not. So you want to definitely make sure you replace it and also make sure you're facing it the right way, right? So you want to have meat uh, facing the rotor uh, on this side, right? So I will put in the new ones and then see how much this is the, the piston right here that I'm talking about so what I'll do is I will have to push it in um, let's see how I'm able to do that so what I ended up doing uh, to push this piston in uh, I, like I said I've tried to use hammers before uh, the butt of a hammer but that just won't fit um, on this caliper I think it was one of my other vehicles that I uh, use that with. Uh, instead, I used my tire iron again, just one like this, and grab hold of uh, part of the vehicle and then just try to push it as far as I could. I'm not sure if this is far enough yet. As you can see, it's a little bit further in. Um, if not, I'll have to push it in a little bit more. Another thing you can do is if you have a C-clamp that can also work however this one's not big enough it just wouldn't, uh, wouldn't meet another thing you can do is actually put the pad uh, leave the pad that's there the old one and then try to clamp that because um, it'll be out a little bit further and then you can try clamping that as well and that will push both of them at the same time um, that's actually the easiest way but like I said my C-clamp uh, just won't fit um, on this this particular caliper so unfortunately I'm not able to do that all right so another thing I forgot to mention when uh, compressing these pistons here um, it actually might make it easier if you uh, if you go up to the brake fluid reservoir and actually just loosen it uh, because what's happening is when you're um, compressing them, it's actually backing up the brake fluid and if there's a, a good seal, which there should be, um, on the reservoir, it actually might make it harder to push back. So just um, loosening that can sometimes make it easier to uh, compress these pistons. Alright, so I have pushed uh, both pistons in now. And now I'm just going to put the new pad in. Um, as you can see, there's these little clips right here. You have to actually push up to be able to slide the pad in. It's on both sides. And then uh, do the same thing for the closer end of the pad. All right, here's just another look. I put in the, the back one. Now I'm going to put in the front one. But again, there's this little uh, pin right here, if you can see. Lighting's kind of bad, but you just uh, have to push this up before you can slide in the pad. All right, so I have uh, the new pads on, and then if you have compressed the caliper, I mean the pistons enough. The caliper should just slide right on. See where those pads are? It's not even hard to slide this on. And then you just do the reverse. Put the uh, bolts back in and you are set. And then obviously the other wheels. But I'll show you the back ones as well. Alright, so the right side ended up being a major pain. I cannot get those bolts out. so. Here is the other, I went ahead and bought a big C-clamp, this is 6 inch. Um, so this is what it looks like when you're trying to compress that piston this way. Alright, so this is the rear brakes. As you can see, I'm using my C-clamp again and uh, this is definitely the easiest way. Um, I didn't have one earlier, but uh, when I was trying to get one of those bolts off on the front uh, brakes, it just would not come off. So I broke 
or I gave in and decided to buy this. So this is a six inch again, um, definitely makes this much easier. So you push in, uh, you clamp down and it'll push back those pistons and just make it a whole lot easier. So definitely invest. In. I think it was like $17 for this clamp, but uh, it was definitely worth it. These back uh, brakes, I did it a little bit different. Um, as you can see, I actually left this uh, frame, I think it's what it's called, I forget, um, on and instead of taking the, the bigger bolts off, I took off these right here. Now this is an option you can do on the front as well. Um, I prefer to actually take these off, but these ones in particular were just, I mean, they're pretty locked on, um, frozen there. Uh, and also because the the angle of my uh, um, grip right here on on this back one, so I might do it different on the on the left side, but on this side I decided that it was easier to take these off, and that just pulls this straight out with the pads. So that is another option. Um, it's really a preference, I'd say. But like I said, I actually like taking off the bigger ones. Um, I feel like that's a little bit easier myself, but it is definitely um, an option for you. So really it probably will come down to which are the easier bolts to take off. And then that's the one you're probably gonna wanna go with. So again, just uh, same thing, just I'm just gonna be replacing the pads now. And make sure that you put these uh, shims to hold the pads in place. All right, so here's a quick look at the old pad, the new pad, just to see uh, the, the amount of meat that's on the difference in the pads. Um, as you can also see, this one has this little uh, bracket, I guess, right here. This is actually going to go uh, into the piston on the brakes. So also if you're wondering where the, uh, the this clip uh, is that's where it, that's how it fits in there. So those teeth are gonna go right in here. Uh, like like so and that just fits straight in there the back okay. Alright there's just another look at this pad going in with those teeth might have to uh, press the teeth a little bit with the screwdriver or something just to make sure make them all three of them fit into that piston but once you get it in then you just push it down okay and this is actually easier um, on the back than the front uh, so far as getting in line with the frame here all right, so now I have the new pads on. Um, how I did, how I actually put it on was, this one will actually be loose. Um, let's see, as you can see, it just slides in. So I, I held the entire thing like this, with this one kind of being loose, like I said, I was just holding it, and then you just slide it in, and that way, this front pad will just line on right there. And the back pad does similar, but it's being held in by the piston, remember, so you don't really have to hold it in place, it'll stay in place and then just slide it in. And that is how you do the back pads. So like I said, they're actually a little bit easier than the front, um, but that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. So now I'll just put the, the bolts back into here and I am done. Not too bad, guys. Um, another thing you can do is um, when you're when you're actually pushing in the pis the the piston. Remember the uh, the fluid, the brake fluid, actually will rise typically in the reservoir. And while it's r risen, you can actually try to siphon some out and replace it with some fresh uh, brake fluid. is a good idea. So it's another thing to think about. Um, when, when you do this, that way you're just getting it out and flushing that a little bit. Now, it's not going to be 100%, but if you do it for both, you know, when you're changing the front and the back, you know, it'll it'll make a difference. So it'll be a little bit cleaner and your brakes will probably uh, work a little bit better. So there you have it, guys. 
So another thing with uh, removing this particular bolt, I was noticing that this um, nut right here was spinning. So I can't, as, as much as I was turning this, it wasn't getting me anywhere. So I just put this adjustable wrench right here. And this is me actually tightening it back, but you can see that way it's actually cold in the spot. Otherwise that nut will be uh, spinning around. All right, so here is my brake fluid reservoir. As you can see, it's actually really high up. And this is just after um, the back brakes only. So what happens is, again, when you push in the cylinder and the brakes, it's gonna actually push uh, back on the fluid. So as you can see, it's well past the maximum limit. So you're actually gonna have to siphon some out. Um, when I first did the front brakes, which is what I did first, um, the same thing happened. So I actually pulled some out um, and then I replaced it with some, or I actually pulled out as much as I could using this pump. And then I put some fresh brake fluid in. Um, and then I drove, I drove, uh, just drove around a little bit to get the brakes um, broken in a little bit. And then I did the back ones, and again, the fluid is high up, so I need to siphon some out. And again, I'll actually get as much out as I can, um, and then put some fresh one uh, in. That way, it, it's not as good as um, doing a whole brake flush, but it's definitely better than nothing. So it, this should actually be uh, much clearer um, once I've put the new, the new uh, brake fluid in. And uh, again, that's just something you, you gotta make sure you look out for because this, uh, when you're actually compressing the pistons, the brake pistons, it actually can overflow um, depending on how much is in here. So uh, be aware of that. It might even be a good idea to siphon some out before you even compress the pistons. So it'd be like the first thing you do um, when you start this process of uh, changing the pads is actually just opening this up because you need to do that anyways um, and then siphon some out. 